excuse me, Judaism is really Talmudism. They're, they believe in the Talmud more than they believe in, in, the, in, in the Torah, which is the five books of Moses. They believe in the Talmud. And the first time the Lord showed me a few things that were in the Talmud, I thought it was anti-Semitism. It took about three years. It took about three years and the, the Lord kept bringing me back. It's the first words I heard. I shut off the websites. I, sh I didn't want to hear it. Anti-Semitism. Yeah, I didn't want to listen. And over a period of three years, the Lord brought me back and brought me back and brought me back. And one thing was ho so horrible that I, I wound up in this website on the internet which was showing a certain passage from the Talmud, that I went, I, I, Brendan, I, I took a class with the rabbi for five years. I have a personal relationship with this rabbi. Okay. I have personal knowledge of, of, of their understanding of the scripture and their beliefs through this man and through the other people that I met at the synagogue. And I went to him and I told him what I read on the internet. Which, which says, which it was quoted as, as a portion of the Talmud, that a man who has sex with a child, a little girl, of three years and one day, that the only penalty was that he had to pay her father money. And I went running to the rabbi and I said, that, that can't be true. I said, so do you know what they're saying on the internet? Do you realize what they're saying on the internet? And he told me that it was true. And I was all upset. I said to him, uh, well, it was a very old law written a long time ago. Uh, and I said to him, well, can't you take it out? Can't you remove it? And he turned his back and just walked away. Wouldn't discuss it with me any further. It's in there. It's in their Talmud. You need to know what they say about Christians in their Talmud and other ethnic groups. That's not Moses' There was no Judaism. There was no religion. It was the laws of the nation of Israel. It's a whole different religion. And this group of people who I believe have been adopted by God, and I believe they've done this good work of preserving the Hebrew and all. There are so many texts that haven't been translated yet that are rich with knowledge and wisdom. They've done a great job, but there's an evil mind in the midst, and God wants to save them. He wants to save them, he wants to deliver them from this evil mind, and to put them on the front lines of his army because they already, they already have the wisdom and the power, or they're equipped to receive the power. God raised up Paul in three months. He'll raise them up in three months. Now, not every one of them, the ones that are equipped, but enough of them. God will raise them up in three months to a year. Once, once he convicts them of that Jesus Christ is Messiah and, and brings them to repentance. And it will be, it'll be a poor experience because the, the, they are in an ironclad fortress. You cannot even get through to them. So today, we have the privilege of reading a spiritual translation of Zechariah chapter 9, verses 1 through 8, that God gave me, which is actually a prophecy to the church and to the Jew. It is going to save the church, which is deep in sin today, and it is going to save the Jews, which are deep in sin today with their Talmudism. Both groups, Christians and Jews, love God to the best of our ability, but we're confused in our mind. We, 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 what we believe then it, what we, it has to be what God believes. We have to believe what God believes. We have to find out what God believes. <coughs> you have to let go of everything that, that <coughs> God doesn't believe. You know, sometimes he lets you believe things when you're a child. When he wants you to grow up, you have to stop believing in Santa Claus. It's okay when you're a child, but it's not okay when, when the barbarian hordes are about to, to stamp out... Uh, Christianity, they're about to come over and say, well, they're already here. So you say, well, they're Catholics in the, in the, in the Middle East. Well, they're Catholics. That's, the, that's where they are. That's the best that they know. They have faith in Jesus Christ. They're being buried alive. Do you know they're burying their children alive? Beheading people, crucifying people, because they, they named the name of Jesus. 
Well, don't talk to me about sectarianism when people are being murdered like that. That's how they understand him. So it's a spiritual war, brethren. It's a spiritual war. It's a spiritual war against this, the, the spiritual power that's driving this Antichrist movement that has many heads. They're ISIL in the Middle East. They're the United States government in America trying to wipe out Christianity and in, in Great Britain and all over all of Europe. Brethren, it's a spiritual war. And only the spiritual power of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to bring it down. And he brings down, he wages warfare through people. And where are God's armies today? The Jews are waiting to kill the Christians because they think we're idolaters. And the Christians are waiting for another Pentecostal revival. And it gets worse every day. So, I'm here to try and raise your consciousness. I've been trying to raise the consciousness of this Jewish rabbi for quite a few years. I've had contact with several rabbis. I hope that they have the seed, but there's no sign of it yet. But of course the seed goes underground and it has to sprout. And the Lord has to do it, and he's going to do it, and the day is coming soon. So if you haven't shut off this message yet, this is your challenge. Are you, going to, uh, are you going to at least ask the Lord if it's true? Will you let me be a part of this, of this army? Are you, are you, will you pray that prayer? If this is true, will you let me go forward and be a part of the army? Or if it's true, will you let me believe it? Will you witness to this truth? Or are you just going to shut off the DVD and say whatever you say about me? What are you going to do? So look, I'm going to read the alternate translation of verses 1 through 7, and then I'm going to go back because I made a couple of changes in the earlier verses based on a deeper understanding, which I will explain to you. And, uh, and that's what we're going to do. And I hope that you're still listening and that you're seriously considering believing what I'm saying because you've looked at the Spirit on me. And... Most of you know me personally, and you know me as a woman of God. So you're supposed to try the Spirit. The Spirit witnesses to the Word. Don't cut me off because you don't like what I'm saying. The Spirit on you witnesses to the Word. The Word does not witness to the Spirit. The Spirit witnesses to the Word. So here we go. Well, we have 24 pages of notes today. The notes really that long. Oh, my goodness. Okay, on page 24, I'll read you the, the ultimate translation, and then we'll go back a verse at a time, and I'll do my best to explain to you how I received this translation from God, from this interpretation from God. The burden of Jehovah's word to ISIL, which claims to be the legitimate ruling authority of Damascus, the land of Hadrach, the god of the Syrians. Jehovah is married to the tribes of Israel, of the Israel of God, through the mind of the whole Adam, which are assembled together against the vehement wisdom of Freemasonry in the U.S. government, which separated itself from me when they consciously gathered their mind together with the spiritual power of Freemasonry and gave ISIL the wealth they needed to build a fortified military machine with sharp teeth. Look, Adenoid will severely strike the witchcraft which has, seized, which has seized the unconscious mind of the U.S. government and consumed. I have to tell you right now that I, I was in denial when I put this together, but it's not the U.S. government. It's really, it's really the Jews. It's, it's the Jews because, brother, because God wants to set the Jews free so that they could be in his army. So I just have to change it. Verse 2. Which are assembled together against the vehement wisdom of Freemasonry in 
the Jews. Do you know that Freemasonry was founded in, by, by Ashkenazi Jews? In case you don't know it, Freemasonry was founded by an Ashkenazi Jew. And a lot of what I'm telling you, if not all of what I'm telling you, is on the internet by some people are anti-Semitic that are using this, that are using this truth to be anti-Semitic. I'm not anti-Semitic. I'm giving you this truth because we have to know the truth about the Ashkenazi just before God can set them free and draft them into his army. And this is a big shock to you because everybody's praying for Israel out there. And I believe God is going to help Israel. But brethren, you need to understand that Israel is a secular state that's deep in sin. But I believe he's going to save them for his own namesake. But he's going to bring them, make them righteous. So it's the same thing as the church. Judgment is, is coming to the church. You think judgment's coming to this country? Judgment's coming to the church, which is in deep idolatry. You think Israel can? You think you think that judgment came to Israel and Judah, but it's not coming to the church with all of this sin in the church? Judgment is coming to the church, and it's coming to the Jews. And the Jews are very important right now because they're the ones that can be raised up into God's army quickly. The church has all of this instruction to do, all of this studying to do that you've been rejecting for all of these years, refusing to take it from God, choosing to believe in a rapture rather than a spiritual ascension through education and wisdom. The burden of Jehovah's word to ISIL, which claims to be the legitimate ruling authority of Damascus, the land of Hadrach, the god of the Syrians. Jehovah is married to the tribes of the Israel of God through the mind of the whole Adam, which is, it should be, which is a set, well, I hope I copied the whole right thing here, which is assembled together against the vehement wisdom of Freemasonry in the Jews. The mind of God is standing against this, the vehement wisdom of Freemasonry in the Jews, which has put them under the law and into this Talmudism. He's, a, he's at war with, with, the, with the doctrine of the Jews to rescue them, to put them on the front lines of his army, because they've got the muscle that the church doesn't have at this time. which is assembled together against the vehement wisdom, the mind of Adlov, the whole Adam, which is Christ Jesus, which is, so, which is assembled together against the vehement wisdom. Now, brethren, that's the wisdom of the whole Adam that the Lord wants to give you Christians if you will just let him teach you. It's the message that I'm sharing with you now. That's the mind of the whole Adam, or the mind of the whole Christ Jesus, that's coming against the Freemasonry in the mind of the Jews. I've been doing it for about seven years now. Whoever else is doing it, God bless them. But it's way beyond telling them about Jesus. They have to hear the message of Jesus in their own literature, which I can do, and which I've already done, but they still reject it. So the, arm, the end time army of God is going to be the Christians that rise into the mind of the whole Christ Jesus, and you can't do it without the esoteric knowledge of the scripture, which includes Kabbalah. And the Jews, which, which uh, respond to the Lord Jesus Christ, embrace Jesus as Messiah and, and, and leave their false doctrine behind and, and come into the armies of God. So through the mind of the whole Adam, which is assembled against the vehement wisdom of Freemasonry in the Jews. Okay, so that mind of the whole Adam is, consists of Christians and Jews that have the mind of the whole Christ Jesus, which is standing against the vehement wisdom of Freemasonry in the Jews. And you can't be standing against it if you don't believe that it's there. 
and that vehement wisdom is the Talmud. You, you research it on the internet. Do you have the nerve to do that, or are you going to go with the crowd? Are you going to go with the crowd that says, oh, these are the people that were abused in Hitler's camps and you can't say anything against them even when it's true? Which way are you going? And remember, I'm not anti-Semitic. I'm telling you, we have to see the truth about what's happening in the Jews so that the Lord can save them because they're going to be the front line and the front line of this army because they already have what's necessary for him to give them the power as soon as he convicts them of their sins. Does anyone not understand? Did I make that clear? Does anyone not understand what I just said? To the mind of the whole Adam which is assembled together against the vehement wisdom of Freemasonry and the Jews, which separated itself, or who, the Jews who, separated themselves from me, when they consciously gather their mind together with the spiritual power of Freemasonry and gave ISIL the wealth they needed to build a fortified military machine with sharp teeth. Brethren, do you have any idea of the Jewish money that is in the Middle East? Do you know that Obama's biggest supporter is a man named Edelman, I think it's Edelman, a multi-billionaire. Do, do you realize how many? Now these are not the black hat Jews now. These are not, the black hat Jews are conservative. Do you have any idea how many <coughs> billionaire Jews are behind the wickedness that's trying to wipe out Christianity in this nation and in Europe? Well, if you're not aware of it, you need to find out because it's true. It's true. which is assembled in the mind of Adam, which is assembled against the vehement wisdom of Freemasonry in the Jews who separated themselves from me when they consciously gathered the mind, their mind together with the spiritual power of Freemasonry and gave ISIL the wealth they needed to build a fortified military machine with sharp teeth. Do you know about the witchcraft that's going on in Hollywood? Of course, they're not only Jews, but it's largely dominated. Large areas dominated by Jews into witchcraft and Satanism, especially in Hollywood. And they have all of this money, and they are supporting ISIL in the Middle East. And they're supporting Obama. So God says he separates, Jehovah says, you separated yourself from me. When we think with a mind that's not of God, we separate ourselves from God. Verse 4, look, Adonai will severely strike the witchcraft which has seized the unconscious mind of the Jews and consume it. I'm going to say Jews and Christians here. Adonai, and I explained that earlier. Who was Adonai? It's Christ Jesus in us. It's not the Lord Jesus up in heaven somewhere. The war is from the Son of God, Christ Jesus in us. And, he, and he's not waging this war without our conscious agreement. We are his army. And the horse is not ready to go into battle. Judah is the goodly horse of the Lord. Spiritual Judah and natural Judah. We're not ready to go into battle. Our mind and our heart is not filled with the, with the righteousness, with enough righteousness for God to give us the power to go and defeat the spiritual power of the Freemasons, which it's the Freemason, it's the Freemason ideology that's behind the people who are trying to implement the one world government. So you see, it's way beyond way beyond what's going on in the Middle East. It's the people that are trying to overtake, to bring, to implement and bring into existence a one world government, a one world church, a one world bank. One world government. And the whole ideology came out of the Ashkenazi Jews. Where then the truth is not anti-Semitism. The whole ideology has arisen 
out of the Ashkenazi Jews. It's all over. You can, the information is everywhere if you're willing to look. And there are some people that are not Jewish, but but the well, look at George Soros. I mean, brethren, it's it's, it's a Jewish ideology. Freemasonry is found is Old Testament, and it's founded in the in in Ashkenazi Judaism. That doesn't, well, that doesn't mean every Jew walking down the street. I'm not talking about every Jew. I'm Jewish. I'm not talking about every Jew that's walking down the street. Whoever's doing it, they're doing it. These big shots in Washington, and uh, maybe in Washington too, in Hollywood, giving billions of dollars to Obama, who is chan which he's channeling to ISIL. Well, they're doing business over there. They're doing business. They're <coughs> making the bombs. They're making the guns. They're becoming very wealthy. They're not serving God. They're not serving Jehovah. They want them. It's the money. Why aren't all these big stars in, in Hollywood speaking out against the atrocities in the Middle East? They're speaking out of, 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 compared to what's going on in the Middle East, what's happened in this country, that whole mess about contraception, and insurance and all. There's nothing compared to the atrocities going on in the Middle East. Not a peep out of them. Not a peep, not a single word. Why? What's wrong? Is that one major Jewish organization that knows all about the Holocaust that's speaking out against the atrocities in the Middle East? Why not? Why is everybody quiet? What about all the women? What about all the homosexual organizations? Why is everybody quiet? Because they've been overtaken in their mind with this witchcraft. Because it doesn't make any sense. If the Muslims come here, they're going to kill all the, all the homosexuals, and they're going to put all the women in burqas. It doesn't make any sense, other than that they've been stung by a scorpion in the back of their mind. Look, I'm going to severely strike the witchcraft which has seized the unconscious mind of the Jews and the Christians and consume it. That's a promise. God's going to do it. And if you can hear this message and connect with him and he, build, and he produces the power to do it in you, you will be on the front lines of his army. Nothing's automatic. Verse 5. Ashkelon, one of the cities involved in the capture of the Ark. I didn't have that earlier. Ashkelon, one of the cities involved in the capture of the Ark, shall see the overthrow of the spiritual power of Freemason wisdom. Now, so what is Ashkelon? It's a group. It's a group of the of the people. There's all different groups. Everybody's vying for power for their own selfish reasons. It represents one of these streams of power. Ashkelon, one of the cities, one of the groups involved in the capture of the one of the groups involved in overthrowing Christianity. The Muslims, the homosexuals. Now, the ACLU, which is all communist now, one of those groups shall see the overthrow of the spiritual power of Freemason wisdom and shall be afraid. So the Lord, you're waiting for the healing and the deliverance. The, pow the, so the show of power that's coming is the overthrow of the ungodly wisdom. The sign of God's return is power. I mean, he may be healing or delivering a few people here or there, but the main thrust of the, of the proof of his return will be the overthrow of this ungodly wisdom that is trying to crush Christianity. Ashkelon, one of the cities involved in the capture of the Ark of God, 
shall see the overthrow of the spiritual power of Freemason wisdom and shall be afraid. And uh, Gaza, where Sam, well, this I added to, and Gaza, where Samson pulled down the temple of Dagon and slew all the lords of the Philistines, shall be afraid also. So that's another group that are supporting this ungodly wisdom. They'll be afraid also. And they represent a group of people in which their idol, their idol will be pulled down and the lords that are ruling over them will be destroyed. So Ashkelon, we see like a, a core group that's manifesting the wisdom, the Freemason wisdom. Gaza seems to be a group of people that are in the temple of Dagon. They're in idolatry in their mind. But the, when the lords of the Philistines are overthrown, they'll come back into their right mind. And the king of Gaza, who expects to eradicate Christianity, and that's a spiritual king, shall be disappointed. He shall not, he shall not marry the child that he birthed in Ashkelon that defeated Jehovah's army and captured the ark of God. On the contrary, the spiritual child that defeated Judah, to, that defeated Judah today, it was Judah's defeated, natural Judah and spiritual Judah. No power, we're defeated. Or if there's any power in Judah's ungodly power. Defeated. They're crushing Christians and there's nothing we can do to stop it. Defeated, today. On the contrary, the spiritual child that defeated Judah today, what well, is defeating, I guess we should make it present tense, is defeating, that is defeating. Judah today shall be destroyed, and this is how I will do it. The Lord's going to tell us how, how he will do it. Now the spiritual child, brethren, that's like the, the man-child in the church. It's a many-membered man-child, a ma many-membered, everybody has an inner man, a new man, and each, 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 the new man in each of us, okay, is a cell in the body of Christ. Well, there is an ungodly child that has been birthed in the world today. And it's many, a many-member child. It, it, has its, it has a tentacle in every human that's working together to wipe out Christianity. It's already there. The man-child of the book of Revelation is not here yet. Or he's here and he hasn't been caught up to God yet. He hasn't received any power yet. I think he's here, but he hasn't received his power yet. But the ungodly child is here and is exercising a lot of power. And the king of Gaza, who expects to eradicate Christianity, shall be disappointed. He shall not marry the child that he birthed in Ashkelon, that defeated Jehovah's army and captured the Ark of God. On the contrary, this, because the Ark of God is captured. For the Ark of God was in the, was in the charismatic Christian church and it's been captured by another spirit. On the contrary, the spiritual child that is defeating Judah today shall be destroyed. I'm not talking about killing people, it's a spiritual child that's going to be destroyed. And this is how I will do it, says Jehovah. Verse 6. I will make a covenant with the arrogant Philistines. Now, I have to stop here and tell you this, that the arrogant Philistines are, are the Jews. One day I had, you see, he's calling them Philistines because there's power, there's power in, in the Jews. Well, look, maybe it's the Jews and the Christians. Whoever has spiritual power in the Israel of God, God is calling a Philistine. Whoever in the Israel of God has spiritual power, okay, God's calling you. And, and you have idols in your heart, and, you, and you've been defeated in righteousness, or you haven't been cleansed, or your thinking is all wrong, it's all in your mind. If you're thinking with your carnal mind, he's calling you a Philistine. And don't get all upset, he said he's going to make a covenant with you. But listen, he, 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 he calls the Hebrew children in Egypt Egyptians. If you're given over to idolatry in your mind, if you give it over to false doctrine in your mind, he's called, and you have spiritual strength, he's calling you a Philistine. When I, that one day when I had that, 
meeting with the rabbi, we had actually come to a, a loggerhead. We had actually butted horns. <laughs> Once or twice we butted horns. And uh, I, w I really had a righteous anger on me, and we agreed, he agreed to have a meeting with me. And in preparation for that meeting, the Lord, one of the things that the Lord said to me was, one of the things the Lord said to me was that, the, that this group, this group of black hat Jews that have power, I'm not so well, I guess it's not just the black hat Jews, the black hat Jews have spiritual power, and the non-black hat, black hat Jews have the power of money. So I guess he's talking to all the, anyone that's involved. Now, you can't be talking to the person on the street, and, you know, can't go get more carried into that. So now what we're seeing two categories of Jews, the categories that, have, that are powerful with money, and the category of Jews that are powerful through a knowledge, a spiritual knowledge of the word. Now, uh, who knows what's going to come out of this message. It, it changes as I preach it. I, at the moment, cannot see a conversion coming to these billionaire Jews who, well, a lot of them, uh, a lot of them are into witchcraft and evil in their heart. I cannot see them converting and being put on the front lines of God's army. I can't see that. I can see God bringing them to repentance, but it's the black hat Jews that think they're serving God, not, not the ones that are into witchcraft, the ones that think they're serving God through this Talmudism and the, and the law, and that have an intense knowledge of the scripture. But that's not the guys that are putting billions of dollars into the war effort. So we see two different categories of Jews. He says he's going to overthrow the Philistines, and anyone in the Christian church that, if the shoe fits, wear it. A Philistine is somebody that has spiritual power from a spirit that's not the spirit of God. I will make a covenant with the arrogant Philistines. And he said, if you're a Philistine, you're all lifted up in pride because you think you know best. Or you think you're smart. He's going to make a covenant with you. Does that, does that sound crazy to you? Well, God made a covenant to me when I was a terrible sinner. Paul said he was the worst of sinners, and God made a covenant with him. So you think because you carry a Bible around, or because someone has the name Jew, or because they wear a black hat, or because you name the name of Christ, that you're safe from being a Philistine? A Philistine has to do with your, with your state of mind. If you're spiritually powerful and you're lifted up in pride, your power is not from God because the power from God does not, does not tolerate pride. Pride kills the power of God. So here's the clue. If you're powerful and you're filled with pride, you know the power is not of God. If you can recognize the pride, you'll know the power is not of God. That's Christians, black hat Jews, and secular Jews who are all lifted up in pride because they have the power of money or the power of Hollywood to influence people. I will make a covenant with the arrogant Philistines, and this is the covenant. I shall marry the Philistines who are uncircumcised in their heart. Philistines are uncircumcised. What does that mean? Brethren, in order to be circumcised, it has to be, it means it's a cutting away. It means there has to be something underneath. But circumcision is the cutting away of the foreskin of the mind. The male organ typifies the mind. So you can't circumcise somebody that has nothing underneath. You have to have the mind of God. It has to be the carnal mind lying on top of the mind of God. And then he cuts away the carnal mind. So we, this is a second witness. The first witness was the pride. The second witness is that these people are God's people, that, the, that the, there's something of God lying underneath, that if, if, the, if the Lord will just cut away the, the foreskin of their heart, which is their carnal mind, he will just cut it away. They'll wake up out of this out of this sleep and decide and realize that they really want to serve God. 
That's what he's talking about. These are the Philistines, which are God's people. Christians and Jews. People that already have something of God, a seed, a seed of the mind of God, already in them, but it's covered over, like an eyelid covers the eye, covered over with the, with the carnal mind. He's going to circumcise you. It's a promise, see? People in the church and the Jews. I will marry you who are uncircumcised in your heart. Well, before you marry God, you have to get circumcised. He wants to marry you. Well, what, is, what, is, what do you mean he wants to marry you? Remember what I said earlier about the Lord Jesus coming down and marrying Christ Jesus in us. So read this, I will marry you who are uncircumcised. Well, in order for that to come to pass, you have to get circumcised in your heart, which means you start understanding the esoteric wisdom, which requires Kabbalah, which you all so you did in the past so against because you didn't understand, see, or you were afraid. So you have to get your heart circumcised, you have to learn the doctrine Christ Jesus has to be built up in you, the man Christ Jesus has to be built up in you, to the fullness of the stature of the Lord Jesus Christ so that the Lord Jesus can come down and marry him and complete and, and make him whole, not complete him, but make him whole. What is this, what is the, what is whole mean? Seven heads and twelve degrees of power. Seven heads and twelve degrees of power. Strong enough to overthrow the seven heads and the ten degrees of power of the beast. God's going to save the world through his people. No rapture. War. Spiritual war. And we have to get our armor. You have to get your armor. And your weapons. I will make a covenant with the arrogant Philistines. I shall marry the Philistines who are uncircumcised in their heart and hostile to me. So that's all the Jews, both the ones that are powerful with money and the ones that are, are uh, powerful in spiritual power because of their knowledge of the word, and the Christians who are hostile to him. You think Christians, Christians are not hostile to God? All the Christians embracing homosexuality? All the Christians breaking God's law? All the Christians joining with Islam? Doing all of these things that they think are right in their own eyes? God sees that as an act of war. He calls you hostile. We'll make a covenant with the arrogant Philistines. I shall marry the uncircumcised in their heart, the Philistines who are uncircumcised in their heart, and hostile to me, whose father was an Amorite and whose mother was a harlot. Well, I meant to tell I hope I copied. A couple of these things weren't copied correctly. Whose father was Amorite and whose mother was a Hittite. The scripture says the mother was a Hittite. And I will cut away the tumor of their carnal mind, which is my judgment upon them for joining my spirit to their idolatrous law. I will cut away the tumor of the carnal mind, which is my judgment upon the Jews for joining his spirit, the spirit that's in the Torah, the spirit that's in the Word, to their idolatrous law. And it's, if you're a Christian and, you, and you're stuck in your carnal mind, it's God's judgment upon you for joining his spirit to the idols in your heart. What idols in your heart? You're, the idol that, that wants Pentecost again so that you can see the miracles of Pentecost, but if you're not willing to go on and you're not willing to go on because you have an idolatry for what was in the past. You're idolizing the past. What's coming next will be greater. But the problem is, the problem in the church, brethren, the problem in the church is a lack of vision. My people perish for lack of vision. Your only vision that opposes a retrogressive desire for Pen to go back to, to Pentecost is the rapture, which doesn't excite you enough to stop you from wanting to go back to Pentecost. But when you get a vision 
of the greatness that God will do through, a, through, a, through raising up an army, a spiritual army in his church with seven heads and twelve degrees of power and the glory of taking out the beast and the, and the liberation of the church, the Israel of God, and the whole world. When you get that vision, you will stop idolizing Pentecost. Verse 7, and I will shut the mouth of the disgusting spirit that calls for the blood of the Christians. Now, brethren, that's not just Islam. I'm, I'm telling you, if you research it, if you research it, God will surely honor your research and show you the truth. It's on the internet. I've spoken to the rabbi who doesn't deny it. When they get power, they intend to behead every Christian that will not repent of idolatry. And the foundation of that behavior is written into the United States law signed by George H. Bush called the Noahide Laws. I will shut the mouth of the disgusting spirit that calls for the blood of the Christians and shall make their prideful speech irrelevant because the assemblage of the widowed Elohim in Judah shall exterminate the armies of the Freemason wisdom. So all of this calling for the blood of Christians will become irrelevant because the people that are calling for it are going to become the armies of Judah that will exterminate the armies of the Freemasons. The Freemason wisdom, well not all of them, but the Lord is raising up an army, some of them, some of them will be taken out of of the Jews, some of them will be taken out of the Muslims that are calling for the blood of Christians and uh, that he will assemble them together and uh, I, I mentioned that earlier when I talked to you about Elohim and I explained to you how Elohim without Jehovah could be, mean any God this is the assemblage of the widowed Elohim, Elohim that's not attached to Jehovah the Lord is going to be extracting Elohim from Jews and from Muslims and from Christians that may think they're serving him and are not or, are to, or know they're not serving him and not serving him and is going to gather together the widowed Elohim, Elohim that's not married to Jehovah. See? And if Elohim is married to another God, he first has to wage a warfare against that person to separate Elohim from that other God. So that Elohim that was attached to another God now becomes a widowed Elohim going to assemble them all together and the Lord Jesus Christ is going to marry them see? and they will become a spiritual army that will put an end to the calling for the blood of Christians so so that's the judgment yeah. that's going to come down on them and they will come against the they will they will ex, they will exterminate the armies and brethren this is a spiritual I am not preaching anything in the natural this is a spiritual war shall exterminate the armies of the Freemason wisdom. What's happening with physical people on this planet is the last stage of the outplaying of the spiritual war. And I mentioned this earlier, however that's going to play out, whatever, whatever humans God is going to raise up from whatever nationality to bring this to pass. I don't know, that's not my message. I teach from the inner core. I, when I'm, what's, this message, this whole message is a prophecy. You have to realize that as it's, as it's preached, God is doing it. Amen. See? So it's going to gather together an assemblage, an assemblage of widowed Elohims. Either people that are not attached to any God, that have, a, that have something of God in their heart, but are not attached to any higher. If you have the Holy Spirit, it's Elohim in your heart. See? But you're not attached to the Lord Jesus yet because he doesn't attach himself to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to grow up into Christ Jesus if you want to be married to God. Or you thought you were already married to God. Well, you're going to have to admit that you're wrong. If you want to go on, you're going to have to admit that you're wrong. And you're going to find yourself waiting for a rapture that never comes and you're going to miss the whole, the whole shebang. I think this is like a last call.
I will shut the mouth of the disgusting spirit that calls for the blood of the Christians and shall make their prideful speech irrelevant because the assemblage of the widowed Elohim in Judah, and that's natural Judah and spiritual Judah, shall exterminate the armies of the Freemason wisdom. I remember earlier I talked to you about spiritual Judah. I explained to you that there are 12 categories in the church. There's no physical designation of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all your, we're identified by our mind and by, by our faith in Jesus Christ, by his spirit. And there are 12 categories or 12 tribes of people in the church of the living God. See? In the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. There are 12 categories. And one of those categories is Judah, people who God has chosen to be a, be a part of the group that will execute the judgment on criminal spiritual power. So if you're hearing this message and you're called to this, you're called to it. Right now, the message goes primarily to the fivefold ministry, and I only this message only goes to uh, non ministers as the Lord leads me to them. But it's very rare. Yeah. It's very rare. These days, it's very rare. Well, no, that's not really true. <sighs> that's not, well, well, it's not true. He wants, he wants you ministers to start, he wants you preachers to start preaching this to your congregations so that whoever is called to this place can at least hear the message. I guess what I was trying to say is when we send out, when we do a mailing, our mailings are by and large to, to preachers, unless it's a, unless it's a, a non-preacher that the Lord has specifically pointed out to me, our mailings are to preachers, but God does bring people here they call me from the internet, uh, uh, that are not preachers. We just, we just got a phone call a couple of weeks ago from a man in Colorado saying that his, his Christian preachers, Christian man, he was a group of ten and their preacher was teaching them Kabbalah. And he knew that there's a good Kabbalah and there's a bad Kabbalah. And he knew all of the basics, at least we talked for half an hour. He said his, his teacher just died. This is the second group that would be coming in because their teacher died. And he said he told his teacher as he was dying, I don't think I'll ever find anyone else to teach me these wonderful truths again. But the Lord led him to us. So those are people, ten people there that are not ministers. But the Lord wants the fivefold ministry to start preaching this message. Especially those of you that have access to a sizable congregation or the, or the internet or has, has access to the public. Because the, 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 the program of God is going forward. If it turns out that it's only a handful of people that hear it because the, because the message couldn't get through to the, to the preachers that have a great, an access to greater amount of people, it's the message, the program's going forward anyway. We're at a time. Brethren, it's very late. The hour's very late. So I'd like to go over these notes with you and show you where I added things to what I said previously. And as I got the message that, as I got the understanding that this message is really for the Israel of God, and uh, that it does, it does touch on the Middle East, because the Middle East is what's happening in the Middle East, is being funded largely by Jewish money. <laughs> it's being funded very largely by Jewish money in the United States. And then we just went deeper and deeper into the spiritual message. But I think we'll take a break before we, we look at the notes, and then we'll try to wrap this up.